Hey, what's going on, guys? So, quick video just to talk about the dual path effects plugins by Apogee. Uh, anybody who's using an Apogee Ensemble Thunderbolt interface or an Apogee Element um, is probably aware that um, not too long ago, Apogee released um, an effects rack plugin suite. It's got four or five really nice plugins in there, um, a couple vintage EQs, um, a vintage compressor uh, modeled after the LA3A, and then of course the, um, the EQs are um, Pultex and actually endorsed by Pultec, which is um, uh, a nice perk there, and um, then a modern EQ and compressor, both of which um, very clean and transparent, um, really like all of the plugins. And, uh, you know, if you happen to use Logic, then you already know how well um, those interfaces integrate into Logic, you know, to be able to control preamps and um, uh, everything that you need to do from within your DAW is great. And, and now um, there's a public beta. Well, I don't know if it's public, but there's, <laughs> there's a beta out that um, I got through emailing Apogee, and I would imagine that you could do the same. Um, but I thought I might just go over how this is working. So this is um, uh, utilizing the built-in DSP processing that is inside of these interfaces. And um, what's done is um, you will open up the effects rack plugin inside of the Apogee control software, um, and this would be used while recording. So, um, so you can set these plugins um, however you like to, um, to monitor while you're recording and um, have the DSP power coming from the interface rather than from your, um, your computer. So, um, you have the ability now to run these programs native or DSP, basically. So uh, let's, yeah, let me just uh, open some of this stuff up and, and we can check it out and take a look. Okay, so I've got Logic open with one track with a microphone coming in on analog input one. And I've got Apogee Control open. And if you look down here, uh, you'll see that now we have this effects insert option. Um, if I click on this FX rack button, then it opens up the effects rack interface that we're used to seeing in Logic. Now, if you've been using um, these plugins, then you are already familiar with this. Um, if you have not seen them yet, then whether you're running natively or through the DSP and the interface, You've got um, five plugins here that you can choose from. Um, two um, fairly um, clean uh, modern uh, EQ, modern compressor, and then a Pultec EQ and um, a UA, um, an LA3A compressor. Okay, so uh, for now I'm just going to select the Mod EQ. Okay. And then I will go over to Logic, and I'm going to open up the Apogee Effects Rack in Logic. Like I said, same interface here. I'll open the same EQ. And now at the bottom of this interface, there's this channel link button, and then this DSP load monitor. Okay, so I will um, decide where am I going to link this plugin I'm going to link this to the interface analog one. So I purposely named this Logic Mic One just so that we wouldn't get confused. Um, these are the inputs on my interface. These are not the, the I.O. settings in Logic. So I'm connecting this um, input in Logic to analog one input on my interface. Okay, and now I go back to um, the Apogee control, you see here's analog one, that's the input there. This is the effect in Apogee control. And it's showing that it's linked. There's a channel link here. 
Okay, so if I um, click on one of these EQ parameters, like the high pass filter, and make a change, that's going to be reflected real time in Logic. Um, and the inverse of that is true as well. Um, if I make a um, change in logic, um, let me do it here, um, that's going to be reflected in um, the DSP version. So then I come back to logic and now it's showing me that I've got this DSP load here. It's telling me that this plugin is running off of DSP power rather than the native processing power in my computer. Okay, so why, right? So um, basically, if, if I had a session that had a, a huge processing load, maybe it's tons of virtual instruments, tons of plugins, and, um, and then I had a singer that wanted to come and do overdubs, and they didn't want any latency and they wanted um, you know, some compression on their voice or maybe we needed some EQ um, for the monitoring chain and I didn't want to add any more processing power um, to the session, then I can offload that vocal chain to my interface. Um, the interface already integrates with Logic so seamlessly. It's, it's really great. I mean, there's the... Um, the ability to turn on or off phantom power. There's a built-in high pass filter, um, phase inversion, I should say uh, polarity inversion. Um, the microphone preamp is controlled here. And then in that scenario I mentioned, you know, one of the best things is that I can just do a direct monitor here. Um, and then I'm coming straight in from the interface and um, you know that is a great example of when I really might want to have um, some EQ and some compression on that vocal recording um, to really get that that um, vocal sound and really the singer kind of in their sweet spot um, so this is going to be um, um, non-destructive. Um, if I were to record with these effects, it's not going to print these effects. It's just um, offloading the processing power of the effect, um, just like you know it would be if it were um, running natively. It is is strictly for monitoring. Um, um, from what I understand, uh, back in, um, I think I have that window minimized, back in Apogee Control, um, if we look at the effects rack, I don't believe that the Opto 3A, yeah, this is not available in DSP yet, which is kind of a bummer because that... <laughs> <laughs> that's one of the um, compressors that I would probably want to use right away. Um, but that's all right. Um, they've done a really good job. I think that they're going to um, probably have that coming out fairly soon. Um, truly, I think these effects sound really, really good. The um, compressor is super clean, um, as is the EQ. Um, um, and then the Poltex, um, actually endorsed by Poltec. So nice, nice little bundle. Um, and, uh, you know, if you need me to do a review of the effects themselves, you know, absolutely just let me know. Right now, I really wanted to just touch on the fact that now there's a DSP option. So it occurred to me that somebody might be wondering if these plugins are going to be logic only. Um, I just happen to be demonstrating in logic, and we all know about the connection between uh, Apogee and logic. Uh, but no, I think that these plugins are going to um, uh, run in, in several DAWs. Um, I know that I'm using them in Studio One as VST, uh, so and I'm pretty sure that they're available um, uh, for Pro Tools as well. 
so I can show you a quick demonstration of um, that process in Studio One and um, take advantage of showing you another way to open these um, plugins as well. So if I go to Studio One, um, I've got a, a session opened here, um, and let me just play a little bit of that real quick. Okay, so if I decided, you know, hey, I need um, maybe a uh, compressor on um, uh, the drum bus, and um, I want to use the Apogee uh, compressor, then um, what I can do is uh, from my DAW, in this case Studio One, I can go to um, the drum bus and add an insert and... Um, add the Apogee effects rack. And then from here, uh, you know, say I want that mod compressor. Um, from here, I, I will do my channel link. Again, these channels are going to reflect uh, channels on the interface, not the IO of the DAW. So this is not my Studio One inputs. This is um, analog one and two input on the ensemble and it's grouping them in stereo uh, because it's the stereo bus of the drums. Okay, so I select um, analog one and two. It's telling me that this is linked. I have the compressor loaded. Now that DSP load, um, uh, or rather now the load is going to the DSP reflected here. Um, if I go back to Apogee Control, um, then you can see here, uh, well, Channel one and two have been grouped as stereo, and the effects insert is on for this channel, and the mod compressor has been loaded. Um, so, you know, I can control the compressor from Apogee Control if for some reason I wanted to. Um, in this situation, this is a little bit more of a mix down situation. Uh, there's no audio coming through uh, the input. Um, it's merely taking advantage of offloading that DSP um, uh, processing power. Um, if there were some scenario where you wanted to adjust from your um, Apogee control software, you could do that, and it's going to show up in Studio One, uh, which here we are back at Studio One, and you can see I've lowered the threshold, and um, that is going to be reflected there. Um, so um, that's a uh, you know little faster way to to get the effect loaded, and um, yeah, so you can see in Apogee Control, um, I'm not getting any audio signal coming through there because it's it's not an input. We're just um, playing back audio, and if I were to uh, open up the insert from the drum bus. Um, There, we can see the um, plug-in in action. I can squash the ever-loving life out of that. Not that I'd ever want to, but just to show you some extremes. So I think that's it. Thanks a lot for watching. If you have any questions or comments, as usual, let me know. If you like the content, please subscribe. Um, I'm really trying to put out a lot of these videos, and um, I'm going to be doing uh, a lot more and adding um, different like giveaways and different things um, in the coming months. So um, please share, like, subscribe, do all that. You can follow me on Facebook. And um, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.